I think we're at a time in Washington, D.C. where it takes a little personal strength sometimes to make it through the travails. And, and my own faith has deepened as a result of my studies. But I also think there are ways in which the religious community and the faith community can help inform some of these very polarized, very bitter debates that we have in Washington in a good way. I think if we look at really how we treat each other and are we treating each other with the kind of dignity and respect that a you know thriving faith community would ex expect of its members that could change the vocabulary we see in Washington. I think, you know, I'm a guy who comes out of the world of political communications and how we express things in the media. I think we've got to tone it down a lot. And I think the church has got some things to say about that and very practical. One of the things that impressed me when I started my studies is when I went up to Capitol Hill to talk shop with press secretaries or work with staff in Congress, as I get called to do from time to time, I'd get talking about some of my studies and how enjoyable I found them, and people would come up to me and say, well, I would love to do that. You know, I, I go to church, and it's important to me in my life, but I don't see a lot of that reflected in the work I do here on Capitol Hill. They would like to see more of that. So I, I do think there are some ways in which we can build some uh, more of a sense of community. I did a, wrote a little uh, piece in the Washington Post recently based on some of the things we're talking about here. And I got a guy who works for uh, Eric Cantor, other side of the aisle, Republican leader in the House of Representatives, reached out and said, hey, I was really interested in that. You know, it's not like we're all evil here on the other side of the political aisle. Let's sit down and get a cup of coffee and talk about some things that we might do. And that's grown into some pretty interesting things. There's some relationships that can develop like that. I think, I think the single biggest missing ingredient in our political system right now are real relationships of trust, you know, human relationships where people really think about and care about each other. And that's right where the church has to be. That's what, the, to me, that's what the church is about. The church is not contributing to division and trying to ordain points of view. It's teaching people how to be in sort of what we call holy conferencing. Uh, you know, if you think about many churches, of course, sometimes they are on the exclusive side, but it's also true that in many churches, you've got people from both sides of the political aisle, liberals and Democrats and conservatives and Republicans, all sitting in that same pew together. And if they could learn in that place how to talk about tough issues, challenging issues, in a more respectful, loving way, I think we could change the way in which we're, we're seeing our discourse go right now. I think it would be a big improvement. Right now, when politics or difficult, contentious issues come up, most pastors flee the other direction because they don't want to divide their congregation. They get nervous addressing uh, controversial issues. But there are ways that you can do it. And there are ways that you can do it and keep that bond of trust that a pastor needs to have with his or her flock, his or her congregation. And I think we need to teach that better at the seminary. I don't think we, you know, we, we probably haven't seen ourselves as being an agent for more civil discourse course. But if we took on that role, we would have to really help teach and train and develop the skills necessary to have respectful conversations. And that's one of the things that I'll be working on at Wesley Seminary. I think the church can use the language that we use about, in the Christian case, inviting people to the table, inviting people to kind of come together and share a sense of community together. And that can, you know, create the opportunities necessary for people to have that kind of uh, conversation. Not all people of faith are going to think the same way about tough issues. But I do think, I do think that there are ways in which you can use the scriptures, use the Bible, use the conversations about social and economic justice that we see in scripture and say there is something that our faith has to say about these matters.